What's going on? It's your boy Hendo here, and I'm here to talk about the Miami Dolphins coming into Baltimore, taking on the Baltimore Ravens in this Week 2 NFL matchup. I'm also going to give you my picks for the week. Last week, eh, we were above 500 at least. Thanks for checking out the channel, and if you like what's going down, hit that like button, subscribe, the notification bell, so you know that when I put out a new video, if you like this Ravens content, let me know. If not, leave a comment saying why. All right, so let's get in on this matchup. Let's start off with the Miami Dolphins side of things on offense. Offensively, I think that they pose somewhat of a threat. It's going to be a good matchup with us with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle going up against our cornerbacks. We didn't get tested too much last week. I think this is going to give us more of a scale as to how this pass defense is going to go. Now, Tyreek Hill, he's always burned us. Sands that last game with uh, Anthony Averitt. I think he kind of limited him some. Averitt's gone. Tyreek's a dolphin now. Things are going to be a little bit different. I think the problem with me that I foresee is going to be Jalen Waddle because Jalen Waddle and Tua – they have a rapport. They played together in college. They played together last season with the Dolphins. So I think they're more in tune. I think with the starters not really playing that much in preseason, it's going to take a little time for Tyreek and Tua to kind of get that continuity established. But I just think that will be a good matchup. As far as tight ends go, I think the Dolphins may need to get their tight ends involved a little bit more. I think their two tight ends last week had 15 total yards receiving but that could be on Tua I don't know I think that Tua Tonga Valoa is going to be the key to this game for everything now I know that Tua is getting a lot of flack because he said today he can't see his receivers you know I don't know the context of it because I've only heard the snippet but from what he said hey I can't see you you can't see me you don't get the ball and because I'm on the shorter side and my receivers are on the shorter side it causes a little bit more of a problem. Um, will that be a problem with us? I don't know. We have some pretty big defensive linemen, so you know him trying to see over Calais Campbell is going to be an issue. But the speed of those receivers, that's the one thing that gives me pause. Now, last week, you know, we had Corey Davis, Brexton Barrios, Garrett Wilson, and uh, Elijah Moore. He was kind of fast. You know, he kind of got open a little bit, but I think that Waddle and Tyreek, their speed is on a whole nother level. They're on Olympic track star speed. And hopefully this secondary can contain them because if they have problems rushing, this should be an easy victory for us. With that being said, the Dolphins are having a problem with their offensive line. They may be missing their starting left tackle. They may be missing their starting right tackle. I think they had a problem with their guard as well. So that's going to limit them rushing. That's going to be where our defensive line kind of turns things up because they got a lot of pressure last week against that depleted Jets line. And if this is the same issue, especially with Travis Jones being slated to come back, the Miami Dolphins are going to be in for a long, long day. Now, conversely, you know, defensively, they're pretty stout on their defensive line. I know they may not have the much heralded people or the names. You know, they have Emmanuel Ogba, Wilkins, Phillips. They have some people that can get it done. Um, I know that they have Siler, the former Raven Siler, that we gave up on. And he's kind of flourished and carved out a little niche down there in Miami. But if we're having it, even more issues than we did before we started the season with our offensive line, that can make it a little tough on Lamar because for us, we have problems running the ball as well. So that's going to leave uh, the passing game as the sole proprietor of us pulling out this win. Can we do it two weeks in a row? We have Lamar Jackson. Of course we can. What are you thinking? You think he's not going to will us the victory as he does most of the time? Um, I just think that we need to establish the run. We need better pass protection. We definitely need better run blocking because their defensive line can get home. Like they have speed, speed on offense, speed on defense. Now, just like with us, I think Miami's strength is their secondary. Um, I know that Jones is out, I believe, but they still have Xavier Howard. And I think the kid Holland, 
that took over its safety. But he's supposed to be a dog as well. Now, if their secondary can kind of slow down Mark Andrews and Bateman, can Devin, du Devin DuVernay pull it out again? I'm pulling for him. I'm hoping for him. You know, we said let's get these young boys a chance. Let's hope he makes the best of it. And will Tyler Wallace and Prochet get involved? Will we get Demarcus Robinson involved? You know Mark Andrews is going to get his targets and is likely going to get things on track because if he's going to be on the field, he needs to become a threat and not a liability. I think he's got the first game jitters out the way, so let's just hope for the best. Now, the biggest question and probably the most important one for us is, can Greg Roman handle the zero blitz? I don't know. Has he learned anything? Most people will say, hey, he's a professional NFL coach. He should be able to handle it. He's had a whole offseason to scheme against it. We don't even know if they're going to do the zero blitz. You know, uh, it's hard to say. But also, he practiced against that blitz every day, all season long, and still did not have an answer for it last year. Let's hope certain things come to fruition, and we have kind of other voices in that offensive room. And they say, look, this is what we need to do to beat it. Because even with that, with that blitz, Miami deploys it a little bit differently than most teams do. So, you know, they disguise a lot of things because as far as linebackers go, in my opinion, they aren't the best. So they kind of have to disguise certain things to kind of take away the middle of the field, get pressure, because they don't have the best as far as sacks go. Now, can they do it without blitzing? That's the key. Can they slow Lamar down? We don't know. I doubt it. You know, is Lamar playing against his next team? Who's to say? I hope not. But the Baltimore Ravens, in my opinion, are going to pull the victory out. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I think they'll blow them out. Unless we can't run the ball. And unless we can't pass block. I mean, <clears throat> we need some defensive scores. Uh, plain and simple. We need a defense to score to kind of settle some things down. Because if not, it could be a track meet. Like, this could literally be a track meet. Because if you take the speed of the Miami Dolphins wide receivers and you take the speed of the Baltimore Ravens wide receivers, it could be up and down the field. If these defenses do not apply pressure, if these secondaries cannot cover the opposite wide receivers, it's going to be a long day for either one of us. So, can we? could we lose? It's a possibility, but will we lose? No, we're not. Coming into the season, I thought that the Ravens were going to have certain issues, but they looked a lot better than I suspected. So where I once thought that this game might have been a struggle, I think it's going to be pretty easy. And I thought Tua was going to play a little bit better. Now, mind you, it was one game. It was only one game, but Tua still looks like Tua. And as I said in the beginning, he's going to be the key to this game now let's jump into those prop bets from my man wheezy let him know what's good that's right ravens flock the madcap is back let's jump right into it yes it's d wheezy here to drop some more ravens bets on you now we went one and two last week as lamar jackson was able to cover that one and a half passing tds as he provided not two but three TDs on the day in that victory. And Ravens fans, don't lie. It felt good beating Joe Flacco, didn't it? It's okay to admit it. Rub it in a little bit. You know you want to. Now, we did not cover the Mark Andrews rece receptions prop at five and a half, nor did we cover on the yardage prop, though we did see the game Play out as I had handicapped as Mark Andrews led the team in targets and receptions on the day as he caught five passes on seven targets. He also had 52 receiving yards on the day, which though was not technically the leader by the team. He was only outed by seven yards. He was the main target for Lamar Jackson, and we can expect more of that. If you feel that is a market market that you want to target, I would definitely keep my eyes on the receptions prop there. Now, if you ride with me on Wednesdays with the lunch break hot take, you know I am going with the plus three and a half Miami Dolphins on the spread. 
However, that does not mean this will be a loss for the Ravens. A play I do like for this game is the over 44 and a half on the game total. I do think both teams in this game will put up points as well. Another market uh, that I will be targeting is a game, pop, a game prop where both teams will score 20 points or more. Now, on this prop, I was able to find it as at plus money as the books do not feel that both teams are capable of hitting this mark. I was able to get it at plus 135. I feel you probably find it in that same range. Now, we saw in week one that both these teams have big play capability. And another game prop I found that highlights that is over under 39 and a half yards on the longest TD of the game. Me, I'm going with the over on this prop because I feel that the likelihood of, of a big play TD occurring is just too great with the matchup that we have here. We have quite possibly half a dozen players taking the field for each offense that could take the ball 50 plus yards to the end zone themselves. A Lamar Jackson, a Tyree Kill, a Waddle, Mark Andrews on a deep pass. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, this, this kind of market and game prop does not specify offense. So that does mean a TD or a interception brought back, a fumble recovery, any play over 49 and a half yards. Or a TD. So, f Ravens fans, make sure, take care. You can check me out on Backyard Action Media, where I'm putting out betting content regularly. And you can see at the bottom of your screen, patreon.com slash BAM news. You can sign up and join and become a Patreon member and get exclusive betting content only available to Patreons. Now, Everybody out there, take care. All right, thanks, Wizzle. That's some good information. I wish we could bet over here in Maryland, but until then, I can sit here and just uh, make my bets from afar. Now, let's get into these NFL picks and see if I can get a perfect week. Uh, so, last week, you know, we didn't do too well. We went 8-7-1. and one. Them damn Colts. But still, we're over 500 for now, so let's keep this momentum going. All right, first of all, we have the Thursday night game. The Los Angeles Chargers are playing the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City. This one should be a shootout. You have Patrick Mahomes versus Justin Herbert. Now, hmm, they said Patrick Mahomes was going to struggle without Tyreek around. If last week was an indicator, it's not going to happen. What do you throw, five touchdowns? Four or five touchdowns? Without Tyreek Hill, I think he's going to be quite all right because he spread that ball around. Now, defenses don't know where he's coming from. Now, as far as Los Angeles goes, the Chargers are going to be without uh, Keenan Allen. I think he pulled a hamstring, and he's going to be out a few weeks, so that takes away one weapon. I know Austin Eckler didn't have that well of a game last week, and your boy Mike Williams is very inconsistent, so... Him as the lead dog, we'll see what happens. But in this game, I'm going to pick the Kansas City Chiefs, 38-27. All right, in the first slate of Sunday 1 o'clock games, we have the Carolina Panthers visiting the New York Giants. Yeah, this is a tough one. Carolina lost to Cleveland on the last second field goal. Baker Mayfield looking like Baker Mayfield. And the New York Giants looking pretty solid. I will say that I was surprised. Uh, with this one, <clears throat> this is not going to be a good game. I don't think it's going to be a fun game. I don't even think people are going to watch this game. But, hey, unless you're a fan of that team, eh, I don't know. I'm going to have to pick the New York Giants. No, I'm going to have to pick the Carolina Panthers to take this one 12-10. It's not going to be very entertaining. It's not going to be high scoring. You have two inept offenses that just aren't any good. Defensively, I think Carolina will step up to the plate. We have the Indianapolis Colts at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, 
what can I say? You expect more from Indianapolis, and somehow they continue to disappoint. I picked Jackson for the win last week versus Washington. They did not. They did not. They had so many chances. And with Golden Boy Trevor Lawrence, I thought that they would pull it out. They almost did, but they couldn't hold it. As far as Indianapolis goes, they tied. They tied with the Houston Texans. Just when you think you have a sure bet, you don't. But in this one, I'm going to have to say... I'm going to go, you know what, I'm going to go back out on a limb. I'm going to go Jacksonville 24-21 because for some reason, Indianapolis loses to Jacksonville almost every year. No matter the talent level, no matter the records, Jacksonville always pulls out one win against Indy. Next up, we have Miami versus Baltimore in Baltimore. Uh, what more? What more is there to say? We have Lamar Jackson. They have Tua Tungvaluwa. Now, granted, they do have Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. They have speed, speed. And even more speed. I know we have speed, but we don't have Miami speed. We don't have that that track star Olympic gold medal speed at the wide receiver position. But what we do have is a defensive coordinator that knows how to make adjustments. So if something goes wrong, I believe that he will adjust and make the necessary moves to kind of slow them down. But all they have to pretty much do is confuse Tua or step in his way because like he said he can't see his receivers so if they stand around him he's going to make inaccurate passes and therefore he won't score I know he left a lot of plays on the field last week I guess because he couldn't see it was some people running wide Jalen Waddle was running wide open all over that field Tyreek Hill a couple of times too but I guess he just couldn't get the ball to him and with that being said I have Baltimore winning over Miami 30 to 23 ah this game we have a tough one. We have the New England Patriots visiting the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, under normal circumstances, this would be a gimme. This would be New England all the way. But for some reason, now that Tom Brady's gone, Bill Belichick just can't get it right on offense. It's just, it's something not right about that team. Hopefully, it's something not right next week when they play Baltimore. But offensively, with McCorkle Jones... It just ain't popping. Like something's not clicking. But then you look to Pittsburgh. Najee Harris is hurt. TJ Watt is going to be out for some weeks. Their offensive line is supposed to be a mess. Now defensively, New England is always going to be New, New England. They may not be that top tier defense, but Bill Belichick, can, uh, he can kind of scheme some things. So with this pick, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh winning 27-20. All right, we got a treat. We got the toilet bowl coming up. Oh, man, it's not the toilet bowl. Okay, we have uh, the New York Jets playing the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Hmm. Last week, Baker Mayfield played his former team. He tried to win the victory, but Cleveland pulled out that last second win. The Jets played Baltimore and got beat as expected. New York is having many problems with their offensive line. Joe Flacco is supposed to quarterback once again he did have 307 yards but i think it came off of 59 passes mm, not a good ratio at all cleveland has the defense and nick chubb went off last week how do i know he's on my fantasy team yeah um i think with this one i'm gonna have to go I'm going to have to go Cleveland 21-17. So, yes, the Cleveland Browns without Deshaun Watson is going to go 2-0. and Ugh. All right, so if you were listening last week, my upset special was the Minnesota Vikings over the Green Bay Packers. And, you know, I, I called it, and it was factually correct. So with this week's upset special, you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers visiting the New Orleans Saints. I think that Tom Brady and the Bucks. You know, even though they beat Dallas, something just doesn't look right to me. Now, Leonard Fournette, I didn't think he had it in him still, but, hey, he ran all over Dallas' defense. Um, Mike Evans is Mike Evans. Chris Godwin, he's out with a hamstring injury, but Julio Jones, we should have signed him, stepped up big time. Uh, New Orleans, New Orleans beat Atlanta. They came back to win that game. And James Winston, now that he can see, 
is making better decisions. Uh, Slant Boy's back in action, and Jarvis Landry looked pretty good. I was I didn't think Jarvis Landry had it in him. I thought he was on the downslope of his career, but in game one, he came through. So, once again, upset special. I'm picking... I'm picking the New Orleans Saints to beat the Tampa Bay Bucks 30-28. All right. In the toilet bowl two, I mean, Washington Commanders versus the Detroit Lions. In Detroit, uh, you have Carson Wentz coming off of a four-touchdown performance. I didn't think he had it in him, but he does have uh, Jahan Dotson, Terry McLaurin. You know, he, he has some weapons on offense. So, I mean, it is what it is, but... The Detroit Lions were a scrappy team. They went up against Philly and lost. They tried to come back and listen. DeAndre Swift, I doubted him. I had a chance to draft him in fantasy. I was like, eh, he's a little guy. He He's playing in Detroit. He might not make it. But he made a liar out of me because he went off. I think he had like 140-something yards rushing. Um, with that being said, I'm going to pick Detroit to win over Washington, 24-21. All right, so now we get to the 4 o'clock games. We have the Atlanta Falcons playing the Los Angeles Rams. All right, so last week the Atlanta Falcons, as they normally do, blew a big lead in the fourth quarter to New Orleans Saints and lost. Marcus Mariota, I don't know. The homies keep saying he's the man. He just needs a chance. I don't believe in him. I don't have any faith in him. I just think that all they have to me is Kyle Pitts. It's pretty much all they have. They have a couple pieces here and there. Oh, Cordell Patterson. Cordell Patterson went off. Much respect. But I don't think that'll be enough. Now, with the defending Super Bowl champion, Los Angeles Rams, getting spanked by the Buffalo Bills, I think that they have something to prove. I think even with Matt Stafford, Staffording, I think that the Rams are going to blow this one out of the water. Like, they have something to prove. Sean McVay has something to prove as head coach. Listen, they are the defending Super Bowl champions. Prideful people. I think it's just too much Cooper Cup. Uh, hopefully, Allen Robinson gets involved. They're having issues with that run game. That run game just ain't hitting at all. I thought the Ravens were bad running the ball. The Rams, terrible. So, I'm going to pick the Rams big. 38-17 to 17 over the Atlanta Falcons. Next up, two surprising teams week one to me. We had the Seattle Seahawks visiting the San Francisco 49ers. Now, I thought that this would be reversed. I thought Seattle would be 0-1 and San Francisco would be 1-0, but I was wrong. Now, how much did it play into the effect that San Francisco played the Bears in a monsoon? It was wet. They had some fumbles, some issues. Trey Lance was starting his first game. Now, I'm not a big Trey Lance believer. I think in time he may become a serviceable quarterback, but right now I just think that boy ain't it. I think he played, what, nine college games? And they think that he's ready to come to the NFL and start? My opinion, I could be wrong, but even the people on this team, they seem not to want him as the quarterback. Now, the Seahawks, Monday Night Football, beat Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. It was a good game. They kept my man Brodney from beating me in fantasy football. So, you know what? I should pick Seattle because they did me a solid, holding them boys at bay. But... Reality-wise, I do think with San Francisco's defense that they come back and get to a 500 record, beating Seattle 21-14. All right, game in the desert. We have the Arizona Cardinals facing off against the Las Vegas Raiders. Both teams going in a 1-0. Who really expected Arizona to beat Kansas City? Maybe there were a few people, but... It just ain't bobbing. Like, it just wasn't happening. Pat Mahomes was on a mission. He had something to prove. He wanted to prove he was the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. He just wanted to show Tyreek, look, boy, this is what you're missing. I know you had a couple yards, but these touchdowns ain't going to come as freely as they did here in Kansas City. So, Arizona just was on the wrong end of that beatdown. Las Vegas, they're Las Vegas. I don't care if it's John Gruden coaching. I don't care if it's Josh McDaniels. Tom Cable, Tom Flores, or John Madden. Las Vegas, to me, they're just a bunch of losers. They've had their time in the NFL, and I just think 
they're not going to get, they're not it. Even though I have Derek Carr on my, on my fantasy team, I just don't think he's he can get it done. He, he'll have some nice stats at the end of the season, but I don't think he's that quarterback that wills his team to victory. So, with that being said, I'm going to take Kyler Murray doing his homework and winning 34-28. In another matchup of 0-1s, we have the Cincinnati Bengals playing the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Cincinnati, uh, I got Joe Burrow on my fantasy team. He had four interceptions and a fumble, and they still almost won the game. Now, is that a nod to their resilience, or is that a nod to how bad Pittsburgh must be as a team right now? Uh, week one, who knows? Dallas Cowboys went against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and got mollywopped. I'm sorry. It was better. It was it was worse than what the score was. They are just a dysfunctional team with a dysfunctional owner who is a dysfunctional GM, and I don't think they're ever going to get it right. And all my cowboy friends who are fans, I apologize, but it is what it is. They are not America's team. Self-imposed name, self-imposed fan base, self-imposed delusions of grandeur. Y'all just ain't it. But that being said, I'm going to pick Cincinnati, 41-17 big over the Dallas Cowboys. The last four o'clock game is going to bring us the Houston Texans versus the Denver Broncos. Now, Houston, listen, salute to them. Um, I know that people didn't expect much from them, but they did tie the Indianapolis Colts last week. Uh, people keep sleeping on Davis Mills. Brandon Cooks is rock solid. Now that boy Pierce is running back, I don't know. I wanted him in fantasy, but somehow Rex Burkhead got the majority of the snaps and did most of the damage. I don't know. Is that coaching? Who's to say? Lovey Smith? I, look, I don't know. But Denver? Listen, you think Lovey Smith is bad? I don't know what Hack is doing. He decides to let 40 seconds run off the clock, trying to win a game, and then kicks a 64-yard field goal to win it at the end. I don't know which coach is worse, but talent-wise, Denver just has the better roster. Defensively, they've got Chubb. They've got, well, Simmons is out for this game, but they have Russell Wilson on offense. You know, they have Sutton. They have Hamler. They have Jerry Judy. They have Williams. Melvin Gordon. So technically, you would think that Denver would run up the score and be the better team. I don't know. Houston, they play a lot better than most people expect them to, so. I'm going to still pick Denver 28 to 10. Now, Sunday night game. We have the Chicago Bears going to Green Bay, Wisconsin to take on the Packers. Now, I know that Aaron Rodgers is going to be pissed because last week his receivers dropped everything but their paychecks. I'm sure they couldn't catch cold. Uh, Chicago, Monsoon beat San Francisco, surprisingly. Justin Fields without the benefit of a, a, a serviceable wide receiver room. He went out and he was effective. Nothing special, but you'd have to take the weather into account. And he did beat the San Francisco 49ers with Trey Lance. But victory is a victory. Um, I think that Aaron Rodgers comes through and his receivers atone for last week's mistakes. And I'm picking the Green Bay Packers to beat the Chicago Bears 33-14. Now, we get a treat this week because for some reason last week, we did not get two Monday night games as is the norm. This week, we have two Monday night games, the first being the Tennessee Titans visiting the Buffalo Bills. <sighs> Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. They lost to the New York Giants. If you looked at my video last week, you can see that uh, I had a 30-second clip of this because I was like, listen, the Giants have Daniel Jones. Tennessee wins. I didn't even speak on that game. But apparently I forgot that they had Saquon Barkley. I didn't forget. I just figured he'd be hurt and wouldn't be much of an impact. But they won the game. And Tennessee disappoints as they always do in some way, some style, some fashion. Now, Buffalo, I hate to say it, they they, they looking like the best team in the NFL right now. Now, the pundits picked them to be the Super Bowl winners of this season. 
I can't say that I disagree. Like even with the three turnovers they had last week, they still put a beating on the champs. Like they look they look really good. And that was just the first game of the season. So I think that they're going to take Tennessee and mop the floor with them. 48 to 20. And then the second Monday night game, we have the Minnesota Vikings playing the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, last week, Minnesota went out, had Green Bay, and beat them. A lot of people didn't expect it, but hey, listen, a lot of people didn't expect Kirk Cousins and them to go in there and beat Green Bay, but they did. Like, literally and figuratively, they beat Green Bay. Like, Aaron Rodgers got knocked the hell around. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles... You know, they got hot for a minute and let Detroit get back into the game. But, listen, Jalen Hurts did his thing. I know Devontae Smith is going to want to make up for a zero catch, zero yard performance. And I think that they have something to prove. I think Jalen Hurts has something to prove, just like Lamar. And they're going to go out here on Monday night and prove it. But I think Minnesota is going to keep this kind of carousel of winning alive and take this game 24-13. So that concludes this week's picks. Hope to see y'all next time.